What is going on, everybody? This, of course, is Mr. Tony Stark, and I'm bringing you my very first Season 4 build guide with tips and tricks. I'm going to be taking a look at Ziggs, who is an AP mid champion. He mains mid, and he is a lot of fun to play. If you haven't played him yet, uh, he has been out for a while, but a lot of people were ignoring him in Season 3. Uh, but Season 4, he is a beast, um, and we'll get right into that in just a second. So again, I'm going to be covering a bronze build for him. That means that this is for the players that might be struggling in lane, struggling with farm, and need a good core build to work towards that we're, is going to maximize their potential with each champ. So that's what I'm going to be doing this season, um, and hopefully, guys... You, you know, you're going to benefit from it. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. But I'm going to try to make this as quick and short as I possibly can. I'm going to run through his abilities, run through runes, masteries, and then the build that you're going to want to go for. So getting right into him, he does have medium to high difficulty, but again, once you get to, you know, to know him and get to uh, play with him a while, he can do a lot of damage late game. Um, going over it again, ability power. Uh, if you like playing main, you like playing mid, and you you know you like playing range. He is a, a lot of fun. Uh, his passive is called Short Fuse. Every 12 seconds, his next basic attack will deal additional bonus magic damage. So basically, what you're going to want to do, and this is I'm going to go over a little tip and in, for each individual item uh, or ability. I mean, uh, for his passive. You're going to want to use it on champs. So when you're laning, instead of using that uh, every 12 second basic attack on a minion to get the minion kill, maybe the cannon kill, something like that, you're going to want to drop that on the, the enemy champ that you have. Uh, now that passive won't expire, so it's not something that's going to go away under time. So basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use that to poke the, the champ down that's in lane. It's going to help you out a lot for trying to uh, maximize your farm and then bring down his farm potential. His Q is called the Bouncing Bomb. Uh, it doesn't take that much mana early on. I mean, what you're going to want to do is uh, use that to not only poke the enemy in lane, but you're also going to bring down the minions. It'll really help you farm a lot better than the, than your opponent if you're not only poking him, but then helping uh, to burst down the uh, minions in lane. Um, so as far as that goes, what you're going to want to do uh, is toss it at the champ so that it lands either on his head or near him and then also near the the cluster of minions in lane and again it does have range so you can bounce it towards them if they're running away it's, it's good if you're you know you're out of range as far as your basic attack you can toss it at them to do an extra burst damage uh, the w is called the satchel charge it can be used offensively and defensively it does take a decent bit of mana and it has a a higher cooldown um so it's not something that you want to use all the time. It does have a little bit of a stun if you're using it offensively, but the big thing and the big tip for him and this ability is going to be its defensive uh, uh, utility. So what you're going to want to do is it, throw it down and then use it on yourself to then jump over a wall, get out of a team fight, or then get away from an ability or a gank. So when you throw it down, it will have a four second fuse and it will go off on its own, or you can throw it down and then walk over it and blow it up yourself, and then that will launch you in a direction of whichever way you're facing when you're standing over it. And that's a really, really big thing that a lot of players don't utilize, and I see a lot of people uh, underutilizing it, but maybe using it wrongly, just throwing it down and then either missing or standing on the wrong side of it. I still make mistakes on that myself. So, uh, But it is definitely something that you're going to want to use more defensively than offensively. Then his E is the Hexplosive Minefield. This has a really high cooldown, so a lot of players will try to use it um, as an escape, which is smart. If you're you know, running away, you throw it down behind you. That, that enemy champ or the person that's ganking you has to run through it. It's going to do magic damage and slow them down, which then, offensively, if you do use it as, in that regard, you can then drop your Q on them or drop the W and stun them um, and or even then throw your ult. So as far as that goes, you're going to want to use that... Uh, sparingly I guess is the, is the right word does like again it does have a high cooldown late game you can use it to clear minion waves if you combo that with your Q you can throw it down in the cluster and then the minions will run through it they'll get bursted down you can drop the Q and completely clear a wave really quickly then again the um, ultimate the mega inferno bomb you can kind of toss it the range is almost half a map you can toss it anywhere on the map as long as you can you know as long as you're using an unlock camera, I guess I should say. If you're level 30 and you're not using unlock camera and you want to play Ziggs, you're going to need to learn this ability, especially you can't toss it anywhere out of your screen unless you can pan the screen. And I made the mistake of waiting a long time before learning unlock camera. So this one, definitely, you're going to need to 
figure that out. So let's go right into, um, you know what, no, actually before I even move on, the, the ultimate, the one more thing and the tip with that is that whenever you do toss it, of, of course if you toss it across the map, it's going to have a longer time to get there so that it's going to be a lot harder to hit those, especially if the enemy's paying attention. Sometimes if they're backing, you can catch them here and there, but if you land it directly on their head, the center of the circle, it's going to do more damage than towards the outside of the circle. So it does have splash damage. You're going to have to be careful with your aim and uh, get those Brett Favre tosses in there. Um, let's go right into the runes. With the runes, the AP runes, we're going to have marks of magic, magic penetration, seals of mana regeneration, and uh, glyphs of magic resist, and then, of course, three quints of ability power. In the masteries, I take 21 offense, 9 utility, and I use the utility instead of defense because in Season 4, the mana regen and uh, the way that they've set up the utility is really, really nice if you go like that for magic champions. So, utility and offense. Now, you can set it up however you want, but this is my recommendation. And the item set. So, this is going to be what you're going to want to be wanting to build for him. Your starting items are going to be the, uh, the totem obviously Dorn's ring and then two health pots and then your first back you're going to want to get boots and the chalice of harmony so what you're going to need is around 1200 gold just uh, just under that um well actually just over that just over 20 okay math math is hard just over 1200 gold for that on your first back so he does have a decent uh, ability to stay in lane as long as you're getting those pokes in and uh, keeping the enemy away watch out for your ganks use the totem as much as you can um and really try to get that on your first back. Then you're going to want to rush the Athene's Unholy Grail. As soon as you get that, you're going to have the Ability Power, Magic Resist, Mana Regen, and Cooldown Reduction. So the Chalice of Harmony is going to be able to give you the Magic Resist and Mana Regen, but then as soon as you get the Unholy Grail, you're going to be doing a little bit more damage, you're going to have the Magic Resist, and you're going to have some Cooldown Reduction as well as the Mana Regen. Then you're going to want to go for the Rabadons, Sorcerer's Shoes and the Zhonya's last. If you don't know how to use the Zhonya's and you haven't used it yet, it's a good defensive item, but it does give you ability power. So it's going to give you a little bit more power, some armor, and then you're also going to have the active on it, which basically makes you invulnerable and untargetable for two and a half seconds. So if you like jump into the fight or you're getting you're getting focused in a team fight, you can just kind of hit that. You sit there for a couple seconds, let your team do some damage, and then you can use your C4 to uh, escape out of the team fight. Then if you do have enough gold later on, you can go with the Void Staff and the Abyssal Scepter to get uh, some ability power as well as some magic resist. So that's going to be something that you're going to want to go for late if you do have the gold. Again, this is a bronze build, so I realize that you might be struggling in lane, you might be struggling with farm, so you're going to want to only shoot for the core at least. Focus on your farm, get some kills, Make sure your jungler's helping, and uh, Ziggs is a really fun champion that you can do a lot of damage with late game and really have some fun with. If you have any questions or any comments, any suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Again, this season I'm going to be doing a lot of bronze builds for you guys that are struggling with different champs. Hope you guys like it. Stick around for more. I'll catch you next time.